All right, from Rattle 40, uh, the new one, the Surfer Edition. Tim uh, accepted a poem called The Word Swallower. I know that's weird. I'm a great lover of carnivals, and my eye gravitates in the newspaper to stories about them. In one, I read a list of performers, and I misread Sword Swallower as Word Swallower. And the complete central image for the poem appeared full-blown before me. Luckily, the dog-faced boy arrived when I understandably needed somebody to speak for the word swallower. I'm a fan of serendipity, too. Now, one, one little note, grandiloquence, a large word that we encounter infrequently, is another word for pomposity, pretentiousness, and ostentation in speech, just in case you need it for that last line, okay? I know I would. Okay. I had to look it up. I admit it. I admit it. Yeah, every once in a while I use a word. I don't know. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the word swallower. There is no charge for admission to the green mildewed tent staked slackly in an alley of the midway between the cotton candy cart and the ping pong toss. Build an attraction. The word swallower is not. Few come to observe him seated on a steel folding chair beneath a single spot in a vacant shadowed curtained room enshrined in silence. He swallows words. His silence is golden. No matter how keen the verbiage rising to his tongue, no matter how many edges on each unspoken word that comes to mind, his tent is hushed, but for the whisper of visitors who mark well his silent line of lips. He answers no questions, retorts to no quip, responds to no repost, and his attendant dog-faced boy at the door tells every dusty bumpkin a grim, dismal tale. Says the boy, if there were a king of the carnival, a lord of the boardwalk, the word swallower is not he. <laughs> he hasn't spoken since he learned to talk. With no words for his wisdom, he speaks none. Philosophers divide our sullen species from the other chimpanzees by the power of speech. But the word swallower knows finer and says not on this or any other subject. The word swallower denies nothing. He fears no lack in speech. He keeps peace battened like a castle under siege and guards an armory of lustrous weapons left beyond reach. From imaginary battlements, each word slips behind the tongue, lies sunk in the gullet, plummets to his gut. Lips sealed, tongue unbitten, his thought hardens beneath the red fist beating the bars of his chest and the bellows burning breath into a world soundless and pointless without words. At dusk, the word swallower and the dog-faced boy stroll into the hills of a trim town Noisy with street lit night. The boy barks. The word swallower strokes the curly fur on the boy's ears, creeping through charged darkness and the grandiloquence of stars. Aren't you glad I, I glossed that for you now? <laughs> yeah. There you go. One last one. This is batching coffee mugs, and I read this at almost every darn reading because it celebrates. Uh, my wife, whom I love very much, and we just had our 23rd anniversary, and it seems like uh, 23 days instead of 23 years, right? It's called Matching Coffee Mugs for my wife, Veronica. I'll tell you something. Uh, there is a bird called the Gray Franklin that lives in Maui upcountry, kind of like a quaily kind of bird, and they were imported from India in uh, 58, and they have a really, really loud, louder than a rooster call, but more musical. Okay, really loud though. Uh, in fact, as I recall, when Jose was sleeping there one morning when he was on a visit, one burst into song right outside his window and he came flying out of the bedroom going, what is that, what is that? They're loud. <laughs> uh, the mountain that I mentioned, of course, is Haleakala, the house of the sun. And uh, Kiabe, of course, is the Algaroba tree, or very closely related to Mesquite and all over the place in Hawaii. At first light, a Franklin calls in the field. The cat watches us wake, speaking when our eyes open. Windows pale and we rise to start our morning chores. 
we work together. You feed the cat, I make the coffee. I set our matching mugs on the kitchen counter, your name on one, mine on the other. We shower. You carry spiders in cupped hands to the door and release them in the roses. I follow you and check the papaya tree. One is ripe. In the dawn, the skin is golden. You stand by me and we gaze at the mountain where the sky glows. The sun soon will reach the ridge. Inside, I bring bowls and spoons to the table. You tie the curtains back. A cardinal lights in the kiabe tree. Our eyes open to each other. I slice fruit on the board and you toast the bread. I pour coffee from a brimming pot. You drink from my cup. I drink from yours. Thank you very much. Thank you.